an exclusive by Greg Brown on the front of the Oz tomorrow. Labor support key to a tech fund. Scott Morrison will need Anthony Albanese's support to establish a $1 billion low emissions technology fund after coalition backbenchers opposed a net zero target, vowed to cross the floor and vote against the key legislative plank of the government's climate agenda in the first parliamentary parliamentary test of the Prime Minister's 2050 net zero emissions commitment. Liberal National Senators Matt Canavan and Gerard Rennick told The Australian they would vote against the bill aimed at pumping more government money into the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. They're sticking to their guns, uh, are they not, Caleb? Uh, how do you think that this uh, piece of legislation will go down? Oh, I suspect they'll get the support of Labor and it'll sail on through. But um, I have to say that I do enjoy politicians who have conviction um, because, of course, this I is not something that you can that. do in yes. the Labor Party. Yeah. You know, this is... This is a, uh, politicians who are willing to stray from their party's point of view, uh, I think, are, are often... Um, you know, chided by people within their own parties. But they are the mm. people that ultimately, if, if, if they think that their government or their party is going down the wrong line, you know, they've got the gumption and the guts to get up and say they think it's wrong. And so many people in politics are just there for the ride. They'll do what they're told by their factional warlords or whatever. And, of course, in the Labor Party, you are bound to vote by uh, the, the position of the cabinet. They don't often allow yeah. conscience votes, whereas in the Liberal Party and the National Party, it's, the default is a conscience vote. Mm. And so I think politicians mm. exercising that conscience vote um, and diverting from the opinion of their own party is a good thing. It, it promotes diversity of opinion in politics, and mm. by God, do we need that? Indeed, I definitely agree. And it's, yeah, a good, uh, like you said, it's, it's nice to see politicians with conviction and those two gentlemen have not strayed far from their convictions at all over the past couple of years. So more power to them. Uh, just quickly, one last one on the Oz is a beautiful photo of some construction workers back at it in Melbourne. Property giants are betting on workers returning to the office, pressing ahead with a $7.8 billion uh, in new projects in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, believing that corporate Australia will want premium space to lure staff back on site. So it looks like working from home is done time to get out of the Lululemon and pull on our working suits for sure, Caleb. Over to the Sydney Morning Herald and Australia urged to lift the 2030 targets. Australia is one of a handful of countries that will be urged to set a new and more ambitious 2030s emissions reductions target by next November under a draft decision paper released just a couple of minutes ago, actually, by the COP26 Climate Change Summit. The document, which works as a blueprint for final negotiations over the next few days, also calls, calls on countries to accelerate, accelerate the phasing out of coal and subsidies for fossil fuels. How do you think this will go down uh, tomorrow on Talkback, specifically, Kayla, when uh, we've already committed to 2050? Is 2030 pushing the friendship? Like a lead balloon, Jenna, is how it will go down. You know, I'm so sick of, of other countries lecturing us about our emissions and our plans and what we're doing. Why don't you worry about your own backyard? You know, you've got France, for instance, <laughs> standing up today. You've got Macron saying that, you know, mm. we are for the first time in years going to invest in nuclear again. In this country, we won't even have the discussion about nuclear because it is banned. You know, other countries mm. around the world are actually making moves to do things, and I will accept the criticism that we should be moving along these terms, but Australia is a very different country to a lot of the rest of the world. I mean, all these European countries, they're the size of a postage stamp. They can ride around on bikes. They don't have to chew up fossil fuels in order to move things from one end of the country to the other like we do. I mean, this mm. country survives on trucks. Uh, and, and agriculture and all the other things that come with it. And they are, naturally, uh, resource-intensive industries. Now, I mean, if they would like mm. Australia to wither and die, well, that's their problem. But we are in a very different and unique position to much of the rest of the world. And because we have such a small population, our emissions really are a drop in the ocean. You know, start worrying about yeah. your own problems.